Of course, we got to thank Ms. Dollar Moore and her foundation, the Lake City Creative Alliance, the Ron McNair Center. We, you know, without this building, we can't have this thing. Uh, we got to have Dale Smith. And, and, and would you believe we got a new exhibit again tonight? But some of them might want to come. Because of the fact is that how many of you were born at the Whitehead? Your name is on black and yeah, it's up. And then we got the doctors of the town up. And as upstairs uh, in the operating room, um, if you can't go up there, I got a copy for you so you can see. Miss Ann, yours is up there. Um, so, um, take time after this is over and look at it. Um, we're not, com we're not done in that room yet, though. We've got some, um, uh, new stuff that we had not put out yet. Uh, this is going to be the last meeting until September. Uh, we've had 12 so far. I think this is the 12th meeting. Uh, and we got to recharge. I mean, this is two years stuff. It's about to beat me to death. So, <laughs> but I don't mind it at all. Uh, and thank y'all for coming, really, actually. And if you do know somebody, we got plenty of room to put uh, uh, those folks up on the wall, too. And of course, y'all. If it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't have this. Mm -hmm. We got movers and shakers uh, of the 1920s, uh, 1920, 1921. We got some new folks, uh, some old folks that's passed away. Um, we got some events that we'll talk about. Uh, there wasn't too much happening because of what happened in 19, from 1914 to 19, 1918? American history, American history, World War I, okay? The war that would end all wars, the Great War, okay? Yeah, it seems like every time we have a new, um, new slogan, uh, 1920, 1921, we have a new slogan, and this slogan is, Opportunity awaits you here. Nineteen twenty, the election of nineteen twenty. We got Mr. Arthur Parker, and who was her? His wife, Miss Julia Parker. Actually, Mr. Arthur Parker was buried, was born at Mansfield Plantation and Georgetown. Um, Dr. Nee Smith, M.D. Nee Smith, Ms. Catherine Trulock's father. H.G. E. McElveen was uh, Mr. Jim McElveen's father. Mr. William Severance, uh, uh, nothing hitting right now. I had to skip him. Um, Mr. Lyde Trulock, which is uh, Woody's uh, great uncle, um, and uh, S. Derby Gowdy is Harold Gowdy's, or Trey Gowdy's great grandfather. Um, 1921, we have a new change. We got um, Mr. Rittenbaker. Mr. Rittenbaker is, uh, how many of you had a mean sixth grade teacher? By the name of Ms. Elizabeth Bush, no, not Bush, I don't know, she's down the part. Elizabeth um, Rippenbaker. And what would she do with your knuckles? I guarantee you. Okay. A.M. Parker, Mr. Ralph Jorna. Uh, who is Mr. Ralph Jorna? Susie King's grandfather, uh, and J.C. Young, which is uh, 
Mr. Ed Roper's uncle. And you're going to hear a little bit about him tonight. Okay? Population of Lake City in 1920 was 1,606. Okay? It doubled the population. From 1910 to 1920, the population doubled. Oh, and the man in the picture is Mr. William uh, Whitehead, which is Mr. Edgar Whitehead, and they call him Mr. Billy Whitehead. And when we get to 1925, I'll tell you what happened to him. Mr. John Butcher Trula, 1880-1920, how old was he, Woody? Yeah, how old was he? He was 40. He died when he was 40. And all of us are older than 40, almost. Except for maybe one or two. Okay? Came to Lake City. Went to business with uh, J.S. McClam. Uh, he started his own business. Uh, he built it the first... Uh, Break warehouse, break stable in town, and then expanded. And we had the True Luck Hotel, or what we call the, uh, the Biltmore Hotel. Right, right. Now, anytime y'all want to chime in, come on. Don't be afraid. Okay? He died on um, January the 2nd. And he was president of the bank, and the bank opened January the 5th. And it was known as the People's Bank, which was the third bank of Lake City. <clears throat> the fire department. Now, the fire department started in 1914, but we didn't have a place to put the fire engine. So we had an ordinance and down saying that we're going to designate a place for the fire engine. And it was right at the corner of John Street and McAllister Street. Behind whose place today? Used to be, the history, used to be um, where uh, Lynch's Lake was. Uh, where uh, Nancy is sometime employed, Harry Askin's place. Behind there was where we put the fire engine. No, that was uh, that was uh, actually uh, a funeral home at one time. No, I'll tell you more about it in a few minutes. Okay. Now the sound, the sound, the alarm. Used to have the church bells ring. Now, 1920, 1920 shotgun shells. We shoot the shotgun, and people would run. There was a fire going, so we had um, gunshots in 1920. You know, in 1918, they claimed the soldiers brought the flu back with them. And it's the last time we learned that a third of the world's population was infected with the flu. Um, 20 million to 50 million victims in the world's population. 675 Americans died of the flu academic. In the paper in 1920, it said that uh, the city ordered that schools were closed, churches and theaters were closed, and all businesses would be closed early. So if you didn't go to church on Sunday, during this period of time, you had an excuse. 
worked the flu. But it didn't last but a week. Okay? It was lifted the next week. The VFW. How many of you ever went to the VFW hut in town? Well, this wasn't built then. In 1920, uh, we have the VFW hut. Uh, we got people like uh, Mr. Bill Birch. Some of you know Mr. Bill Birch. Mr. Randy Gravely's uh, grandfather. Um, and was named after Wilbur Jones. It says, after much dis discussion, the name was decided. Okay? And if you were a serviceman, you got a bonus for being in the service. I don't really know what, where it was. I think the uh, the hut built was built in the 40s, but before that, I really don't know where it was. Nonpartisan, nonpolitical. Now, if that if that couldn't happen today, could it? No way. The waterworks. You know, last time we talked about, you uh, had 20 people to vote against the water works. And 21 voted against the sewage. <laughs> Who would vote against that? <laughs> the objection was all the sewage and all the water works was going to be in the business district of town. People living outside the business district didn't have waterworks. We had a commission, and it was voted on uh, in 1919. And then in 1920, we started laying, laying pipe. A hundred years ago, so we got a hundred-year-old system, and it's a hundred-year-old system <laughs> today. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time to read this, if you would like to read it. Okay, we're in March now. Another fellow died was um, Mr. Um, uh, I call him Sleepy, Drew Holloway and Jim Holloway, um, Mr. Earl Holloway's daddy. He was actually 51 when he died. They rushed him to Charleston and he died, and then they buried him. And he was partner of Mr. G.R. Bowen, uh, Holloway and Bowen Warehouse, which was Saul Street. It almost occupied the whole block of Saul Street. <laughs> <laughs> the 
the overall club had to have some type of um, entertainment. 150 people, mostly men, had preachers, bankers, judges, lawyers, doctors and merchants, teachers, schoolboys, all wore overalls, except on what day? On Sunday. Okay? At big parades, you get in the automobiles, and they will parade up and down Main Street, and McAllen Street, Hack Line. They're having a good time. It was in April. This is also in April. The tobacco market, they were thinking about the tobacco market in 1920. Okay? The farmers would come, and the women didn't have anything to do with it, they'd go shopping. Well, they had to have a place to rest. So, City Council came up with the idea of having a place for the ladies and the children to rest, even take naps, okay? If you can't read the bottom line, the Chamber of Commerce appeared and asked for a, a permit to um, erect a canvas tent on the surgeon lot behind the surgeon's door. The surgeon's door is, you know the junk, I don't want to call it the junk store, but across the street from Joe's Barber Shop. Okay. Uh, the African American store. That was uh, uh, the um, service store. Behind the store, you had the fire truck. Now, how many ladies, how many of y'all ladies would take your children and sit in the hot sun, because this is going to be in July and August, under a canvas tent all day while your man is selling tobacco? That's not too good an option, is it? No. Do we need baseball team or club? We need. What in the world is we need? I'm speaking Indian. The we need Indians or the black Indians. We need meeting black. Black River. Okay? The we need this is one of the first baseball clubs or league in Lake City. Or Lake City was part of. Each team could hire a semi pro or a college player, known to each other. Series was ten to August the ninth. Now why August the ninth? Gotta think about that tobacco. Gotta think about that tobacco. So you could play up to um, um, August the ninth. On a dollar fine if you violated the rules. On a dollar was a hunk of change then. Look at these folks. This team was not known as the Panthers. 
Next time I'll tell you what the name is, but I'm not going to tell you tonight. All right, y'all look at number one at the top row, or number three. What does that look like? Harry Askins. That's Mr. Raymond Askins. Number 13, Mr. Kleiss Dugley. Some of you may have a chance to know Mr. Kleiss. Mr. Raymond told me that they went down to Charleston. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but it's a heck of a good story. They took the train to Charleston. They played the Bantams of Charleston High. And Mr. Raymond said, you know how fast he would run, walk. He took off, he was in the backfield, he took off, he broke loose, was running down the field, and he looked back to see if anybody was chasing him. And he fell in a hole as deep as he was. <laughs> we lost the ball game, seven to nothing. Mr. Clyde Dugley is one of our first pro baseball players. He played for, would you believe, the New York Giants. And he told me out of his word, out of his mouth, I said, Mr. Kleiss, now you played around about the time of the Babe Ruth. He said, yeah. He said, actually, I pitched against him. We had an inner city before the the season started, we had an inner city game with the Yankees. And I threw a fastball and I breezed him. Then I threw another one and I breezed him. It was two and two ball, I mean two strikes, no ball. I was gonna strike him out. The next pitch he hit, the first baseman, he hit the ball so hard that he said that the first baseman reached up, grabbed, tried to grab the ball. The ball took his glove and put it in right field. <laughs> they took him out after that. <laughs> okay. That's the 1920. Miss Helen Daniel. Y'all know Miss Helen. Okay. Um, Catherine Diggs was Mr. Ed Diggs' sister. Class of 1921. How many of you went to Dr. Jamie Cockfield dentist office? Jamie Cockfield. Fred Starvey. There's this guy right here, and we'll find, find out later on in 1934 something bad happened to him. This guy right here, Edgar Whitehead. This lady, number 10. He played the organ forever at the Baptist Church, Miss Ruby Smith. And then the lady right beside is Miss Leslie Wembley. Putting this slide together here took forever. The tobacco market. We were still number one in the state. And we were going to be number one. I'll give you a, a few minutes to read this one.
ten and a half million pounds. That's a lot of the back, folks. And they were going to invest a quarter of a million dollars to enlarge the warehouses, the storage areas. The back was king. And so, so was on uh, uh, produce. Killed in Lake City, Indian Joe. His real name was Dr. Allen, but he really wasn't a doctor because he was a medicine man. Okay. I thought about plugging this in because of the fact is that um, he is buried in Miss Kelly Cemetery. Yes, he is. McAllison and Kelly Cemetery he is a guy named um, Doc, <coughs> Doc uh, Allen. How would you like to have a telegram saying your husband got run over by the train? 34 years old. Buried two days later. Is he marked? We got two banks consolidating. The Bank of Lake City and the Farmers and Merchants. Mr. Charles Kelly gave me this check here. You remember it to date 192, so you can have 10 years of checks, you know. From the Farmers and Merchants National Bank. This is in October. The first bride at the Baptist Church. Happened on December the 8th, 1920. Aletha Fulmore married MacIver Bowen. And this is the first wedding in the new church. Okay. Here are some of the city council minutes I found ordinances, you couldn't have any hogs uh, in the city limits anymore. Um, got a new brick store. I never thought about how the sewage line went underneath the railroad tracks, but we had five different pipes going across and underneath the railroad track. Lake City phone system, we have having complaints about those folks. Mr. Hargrove resigned as chief of police. January 3rd, on Mr. Pratt his chief of police, and a night marchman. And let me tell you about the night marchman and the city police. The day police got paid more than the night police. One Friday, now this is true now, y'all may not think it is, but this is true. One Friday afternoon, the day police arrested and uh, intoxicated, intoxicated, or drunk, okay, and put him in the jail. Well, on the weekends, you will cover. Well, the night police, 
they can get the word that it was his weekend. So when the drunk was sobered up, it was Friday, Saturday morning. Nothing to drink, no food. Sunday morning. Monday, when the day police came, went into sale, the man was dead. And I don't know, this, this, this is stretching it a bit. But he said that they were holding the bars, scratched, <laughs> and he was dead. And this was actually told by a nephew to me years ago. It was his uncle. Having trouble, <clears throat> having trouble with um, the train, going too fast down the tracks. Okay, no letter was written. No open toilets on Main Street to McCall McAllister Street. Now who in the world would have dynamite in a hardware store? You know, selling it and the hardwood store is where um Larry Hawkins' place is. Y'all know Larry Hawkins but place is. The um, right, the mattress company. Mr. Pratt, in November, he resigned. And Mr. Wagstaff, who was the night police, takes over as the day police. Shooting fireworks. They had to change that law because I know that all of us, my age or a little bit younger, Jack Shushop had him, him 80s and cherry bombs. So, you know. And then city council voted to give or to donate a hundred dollars for the um, um how you say it? Armistice Day celebration. This armistice celebration is something big. But first of all, JC Young getting back to him. Mr. Head Young, I mean Head Roper's uncle. And his brother donated a library in Columbia College in 1920. From 1922. 1967, it was a library. Then it was known as Alumni Hall. It's the oldest building on campus today. This was in June. Guess what happened to S.W. Young? Somebody breaks in his house, steals his iron safe of thirty thousand dollars of Liberty bonds and an equal amount of mortgages. 
$60,000 in safe. Gone. It's amazing how people had money back then. This was in August. I wonder if that was tobacco money. Armistice Parade is big in our Christmas parade. Miss Smith, Miss Ruby Smith, Miss Joanna, Miss North, Miss McClam, Miss Zilphia McClendon's mother. Henry Epps, which is Eddie Epps' grandfather, Miss Holloway, and Mr. Bowes. How would you like to have those ladies come up to you and tell them no? There was no way in this world those ladies were going to get a no. Okay. But this had to be in a big time, November the 11th. 1921, 5,000 people attended this parade and celebration. 30 floats had a football game, and Timmonsville beat us 11 to 7. Timmonsville, how awful. A new charter known as Jones and Carter, okay, $25,000. It was wholesale groceries, hay, grain, and other stuff. Mr. Jones would be the president, and J. Howard Carter would be secretary and treasurer. Next time, September 25th. Okay. Thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate it a bunch.